Welcome. In front of me is a Oppo Reno 12 Pro, and today I will show you how you can bypass the Google verification on this phone. So, to get started, uh, you'll want to, number one, uh, have a couple of things prepared, and one of those will probably exclude some of the people that might be interested in doing this. So, most importantly, we will need a secondary phone. Now, uh, the second phone doesn't need to be any kind of specific device, it just needs to have access to the Google Play Store. So obviously that would exclude uh, iPhones. But any kind of Android will work. And I do want to also give a little bit of a caveat to every, any Android. Some like really cheap devices, some older ones might not have the access to the application that we will need to download from the Play Store. Uh, so obviously that would exclude these specific uh, circumstances. But for the most part, majority of the Android devices will work. There is just a small percentage that are just too old or too weak to uh, to be able to do this. And those are primarily the devices that are uh, running stupidly low amounts of RAM and uh, the device is running something like Android Go or uh, the phone disables a draw over other applications by default and doesn't give you the option to enable that. Those would be phones that would without a doubt be excluded from being able to be used for this process. Now, <clears throat> moving to this device, you can see that it is locked, it's telling me to draw the verification pattern and I have the little lock right here and if I also click on the X, it will tell me to verify my Google account. So, no doubt the device is locked. Now, with that being said, to begin our bypass, you number one wants to connect to your Wi-Fi network. I have already done so, which you can see right over here. And once you connect to your network, you can click on the eye icon. And from here, we're going to select a share option. Now, I am going to block this with my hand as it does show the actual QR code for my network and possibly even password. I don't remember if this one is the one with the password, so I'm just going to kind of do this. Press share. And it does show password, um, so I'm gonna keep my hand hovered over it. Uh, but here we have quick share, so I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna select continue, and from here, let's click on need to share it somehow. Learn more, need help sharing. Nope, so that's not this one. I think I know what will be the problem. Let me just go back it again oh there we go and right nope okay so I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do here uh, usually the uh, need help sharing uh, kind of thing is much easier to actually locate See if in a guide it changes, uh, changes anything. Um. Oh, okay. So it did change. So uh, kind of going to it again. We're gonna select the share option right here. Again, quick share, three dots, and settings. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Uh, but for some reason uh, now it's under the actual like settings which didn't exist before anyway uh, from here we're gonna select a uh, learn more about the quick sharing so there we go the blue t uh, text at the bottom three dots again and then we're gonna select share article and from here we should have chrome there we go as a browser click on it and then select continue without an account okay let's try that again No thanks. And now we can search. So in this search bar, you want to type in hard reset that info slash bypass. Like so. Once it's typed, you can navigate there. And next, we're looking for home screen and lock screen. Uh, let's consent, whatever. I'm going to scroll down. I think I already passed it, but didn't really realize. Where is it? Oh. 
I missed a step in a guide. So we're looking uh, for, where is it? Settings, there we go. So settings, and now we're looking for the home screen and lock screen. So that should be somewhere at the top. There we go, home screen, lock screen. And next we're gonna select home screen layout. And this glitches out and brings us to the home screen. Now, don't click off the video just yet, we're still not done. So from here we want to navigate to uh, the next page. And we're looking for tools folder, which is this folder right here. Cool, close. So yeah, the tools folder. And we're looking for the clone phone application right here. I'm gonna now select that this is a new device. Allow anything that it shows up with. Select that ne uh, next the device, uh, other device will be other Android. And this generates a QR code. So we can move over now to the second phone, the one that we actually have access to. And here you want to navigate to Play Store and search for clone phone. So there we go. Now it is installed for me, so I am gonna quickly uninstall as it will then bring up all the pop-ups that we will need to go through. So I just wanted it to be as similar of a process as it can possibly be. So anyway, once you have downloaded the Oppo application or Oppo clone phone, select open and then again, agree and continue. Settings, settings, settings. Can you like... Well, would you look at that? When I was talking about some phones not being supported. Apparently Realme is one of those that isn't supported. Fan freaking tastic. Now this is Realme, so I think they actually use the same application. Um, there is one probably already pre-installed. See. Nope, never mind, there isn't one. So I will need to grab a, another device. Which Stupidly, I did a log out of a uh, Play Store on here, so that's gonna be a pain. So bear with me while I log in on a Samsung phone uh, to a Google account, so I can actually download this damn application. Something went wrong. Well, thanks, Samsung. I could always, I always know that I can count on your dog shit features to not work whenever I need them. Awesome, thank you. There we go. Okay, so now we have a phone that actually will work with this. So we're gonna select scan. Okay. Uh, for some stupid reason, this is a new thing. It, it tells us that we need to deauthorize, which is counterproductive, but that's just what we need to do. Once you deauthorize, you can authorize it. <laughs> Great design. Um, so from here, we can now scan the QR code. Just hover it over the camera over this one. Again, we're gonna deauthorize, you know, the typical logical things that you need to do. And just so we can authorize again. And then we're gonna select settings and we're gonna grant permission to the clone phone. Samsung is actually nice with just kind of like highlighting the application that we need to do this to. So then we can go back, give it a moment. And it will select basically everything. So what you want to do is deselect everything. We're gonna click, I believe, on the apps. Let me quickly catch up with the guide. So I do need to check the apps right here, but I don't have the option to check selected ones. Maybe if I press next, let's see. I'm gonna go settings, allow next. Okay, so now it's actually showing me what I was hoping for. So here we can now tap on the actual apps. And we can deselect all of them as that would, would have been eight gigabytes and we just need the smallest application possibly found uh, for the quickest uh, transfer that you possibly can get. So let's see if we can find something that is like 33 megabytes. 23. So we have Google Wallet, which is 23. Uh, 
Uh, this one is 16. Again, 16. And this is four. So find whatever has the smallest size. Um, so for me, that will be this one. I don't think there's anything smaller than this. Um, so once selected, you can then press next. Again, we're gonna deauthorize logically and allow and start migrating, start migrating. Now, you might think it's going to fail because of what is about to show up. There we go. So obviously we just copied one applications, uh, one application. And in here you can, you might expect that it failed as it does say failed one, successful zero. Don't worry, everything worked just fine as intended, at least for our purposes. Uh, now, uh, even though it technically failed importing the application, the size still matters as it still needed to like go through the entire process of moving it. So the smaller one you can find, the quicker this will go. I found something that was like four and a half megabytes. Obviously this, was, this, this took me roughly nine seconds to finish up. Anyway, from here we're gonna select done and then we're gonna skip adding any kind of protection uh, later. Next, next. Select gesture now, or select any kind of navigation that you want to do, and get started. Now, again, before you go clicking off the video, we're still not done just yet, and now we have access to a home screen. Now, for uh, for information, what just happened and why this is working right now, and also to explain why we didn't take some other steps before. So, um, when we transferred over the the data uh, through the application. Uh, the phone only allows you to do that after you have already verified the in the device or after you went page further to the uh, page where you basically get to sign in to your uh, Google account or whatever. That's that's past that point. So uh, when the device is allowing you to move over the data, once it's finished moving over the data, it considers, well, you are already at the moving uh, data page while you're still in a setup because it knows that you're in a setup. So next thing logically will be the screen lock and uh, on and on, which then allows you to select or finish up the setup. Now, uh, one thing that we're gonna do now is navigate into the settings. We're gonna now scroll all the way down to system and update, and then I'm gonna select, where is it? Oh, there we go, backup and reset. And then reset phone, erase all data, erase all data, and then select clear. Now, um, for the keen-minded people, uh, Kinaid, we were already in the settings. And the reason we didn't do that before is because when we were in the settings before, the device was still in a locked process. So, uh, or in a setup more precisely. So again, if you were to do a reset of the device while well, the device knows that it's in the setup, it will just reset the device but bring you back uh, to the setup screen with the device still being locked. But now that we're trying to do the reset through settings after the setup has been completed, the device is looking at it, okay, setup completed, everything should be verified logically because that's kind of how it works. Uh, so if it if it's, should be verified, then resetting the device should not be a problem. So it's going to reset it and then get rid of all the data. That would also include the protection that is still present on the device. So that is the last thing that you want to do. Select erase uh, data and then clear. And this will go through a factory reset, fully automatic one. Once it's completed, you will be taken back to the setup, uh, setup screen for the Android. But at that point, you can set it up in whatever way you want to. Now, I am going to do this reset just on a separate video as a, just a reset through settings for people that might be interested. Actually, actually no, I already recorded that. So, you know what, I'm just going to clear it right here and now. But all in all, once you select clear, the process is basically finished. It's going to reset itself, take you to the setup screen, and from there you can set it up, like I said, in whatever way you want to. And as you can see, now the reset is finished, and you can go through the setup process in whatever way you want to. Additionally, you shouldn't also be seeing any kind of like lock icon right here. So anyway, with that being said, hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, don't forget to smash like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.